Welcome. I am Tim Hoffein, Food Security Analyst for the Famine Early Warning Systems Network, or FUSENET. Thank you for watching. If at any time you wish to skip ahead, click below the slide to advance. To access closed captioning, click on the YouTube icon. This presentation is based on the Food Assistance Outlook Brief, a monthly report that looks seven months ahead at emergency food assistance needs in the 35 countries that we cover. This report projects humanitarian assistance needs in July 2016. A link to the brief is available at the end of this presentation. Before we get started, FuseNet uses IPC 2.0, Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, to describe acute food security outcomes. This five-level scale is widely used by food security analysts and humanitarian assistance actors around the globe. According to the IPC, when an area reaches phases 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. An overview of our analysis. In July 2016, 18 of the 35 countries that FuseNet monitors will have areas classified as crisis, IPC phase 3, or worse, acute food insecurity. Ethiopia, Sudan, South Sudan, and Yemen remain the countries with the greatest number of people in need of emergency food assistance. The most severe food insecurity is also expected in these four countries. In addition, 500,000 to 3 million people will require emergency food assistance in July in Nigeria, Guatemala, Haiti, Central African Republic, Somalia, Chad, Niger, Honduras, El Salvador, and Nicaragua. Although the ongoing El Nino has peaked in intensity, as expected, the El Nino has a 95% probability of continuing through the March to May period, continuing to impact weather around the world. Ongoing conflict remains another primary driver of acute food insecurity. Conflict prevents people from cultivating crops and engaging in other livelihood activities, limits the delivery of urgent humanitarian assistance, and prevents or severely limits market functioning. This has been the strongest El Nino in at least 10 years, and its impacts have been widely felt. In recent months, atypically heavy rains have caused flooding in parts of North America, South America, East Africa, and Central Asia, while drought conditions have been recorded in Central America and Southern Africa. El Nino has impacted and may continue to impact livelihood activities, the functioning of markets, and the delivery of humanitarian assistance. As of January, the El Nino appears to have peaked in intensity. The strength of this El Nino is likened to the strong El Ninos of 1982-83 and 1997-98. It is still forecast to decline over the coming months, eventually reaching neutral conditions around May-June, but is expected to drive continued dryness over Southern Africa, Central America, and the Caribbean through March. The chances of transitioning to La Nina in the latter half of 2016 are about equal with the chances of remaining in neutral El Nino-La Nina conditions. Chances of reverting back into El Nino are very low. FuseNet recently published a video to explain in more detail the implications for food security of the El Nino. Please click here to watch the video. While conflict and El Nino are driving acute food insecurity, it is important to note international staple food markets are generally very well supplied and prices are below average. This graphic shows the supply of staple foods globally. Production areas are outlined with a dashed line. These are areas that export food to world markets. Many of those areas, shaded in green, are well supplied. FuseNet is monitoring closely the areas shaded yellow, where prices and other variables are not clearly pointing to limited availability of food. In the areas shaded red, prices and other indicators are clear. Supplies are constrained. Overall, global supplies of staple foods are very good. As this graphic shows, supplies of wheat and maize are above average. The global supply of rice, however, is average and rice prospects are less favorable, in part due to El Nino-related dryness in Southeast Asia. The season has started very poorly across southern Africa. Here are three maps that illustrate the situation. This map shows rainfall as a percent of what falls in an average year. Much of the land, as you can see, has received significantly below average rainfall. The outcome is less vegetation, which is shown on this map covering the period of December 26th to January 5th. Our partners at USGS use satellite imagery to measure vegetation. Areas in yellow have less vegetation than normal. 
Finally, this map allows us to project outcomes for crops by showing evapotranspiration, which is one way to gauge the availability of water in the topsoil. The maps show that the situation for plant growth is dire across the region. The rainfall forecast for the remainder of the cropping season is similarly troubling. Here are three maps that use different models to forecast rainfall. As you can see, each forecast calls for less than average rainfall. FuseNet has undertaken a historical analysis to determine projected outcomes for rainfall. These spaghetti graphs illustrate various possibilities over the course of the season moving forward. Rainfall to date is illustrated in the single strand up to the latest available data. From that point forward, each strand of the graph represents rainfall in each year over the past three decades. These are the possible paths rainfall could follow. We prepared these graphs for a select set of major production areas across southern Africa. As you can see, a significant number of possible outcomes fall below the lowest recorded rainfall for each given area, represented by the red line in each graphic. The overall conclusion is that crop production may be lower than average this year. Given that there is an existing maize deficit, prices may consequently rise. Unable to afford food, the poorest households could face acute food insecurity. However, one mitigating factor bears mentioning. While South Africa has been the breadbasket of the region, Zambia has increased exports of maize to the rest of the region over the past decade. This graphic illustrates the growth in exports of maize from Zambia compared to South Africa to the region over the last five years. Farther north than South Africa, Zambia's rainfall will likely be greater. Significant populations in East Africa will face emergency, IPC Phase 4, acute food insecurity in July 2016, primarily in Ethiopia, South Sudan, and Sudan. The primary drivers are the ongoing El Nino for Ethiopia, and conflict in addition to the El Nino-driven weather in Sudan, and conflict in South Sudan. This map shows March to September 2015 rainfall. The areas shaded bright orange and red in Ethiopia have received the least amount of rainfall in over 55 years. Mayor harvest losses of up to 75% have been seen in the worst affected areas of eastern and central Ethiopia. In Sudan, however, unlike in southern Africa, cereal stocks are significantly greater than they have been in the past several years. In this graphic, the bottom part of each bar, shaded orange, represents the quantity of Sudan's national cereal stocks carried over from the previous year. Annual production is shaded blue, and expected imports are shaded dark blue. As you can see, carryover stocks allow Sudan to reach its average annual total cereal utilization, despite that production and expected imports are lower than they have been in the past. The combination of the carryover stocks, production, and imports helps to explain why prices, represented here for wheat grain and millet, have remained stable over the last year despite poor crop production. In South Sudan, conflict continues to drive acute food insecurity. Greater Upper Nile, worst affected by the continuing conflict, remains largely in crisis, IPC Phase 3. Most of Unity State is in emergency IPC Phase 4, and thousands of people in Mayandit, Koch, and Gweet counties are expected to be facing catastrophe IPC Phase 5. These findings are supported by qualitative assessments in the area due to limited availability of direct outcome indicators. Increased violence reported in Greater Equatoria has displaced thousands of people and impacted second season harvests. In December, the government of South Sudan announced the decision to float the South Sudanese pound, allowing the currency to be traded freely rather than fixing an exchange rate. After the announcement, the value of the South Sudanese pound, which has been pegged to the U.S. dollar at an official rate of 2.96 SSP per dollar, fell to levels approaching black market rates of 18.5 SSP per dollar. As these graphs show, prices of imported food and fuel have increased significantly in the wake of the decision. Extensive conflict in Yemen has reduced incomes and food prices remain elevated. Food access is inadequate for many poor households, and millions of people face crisis, IPC Phase 3, acute food insecurity, or worse, as a result. As these graphs show, however, by mid-December, food and fuel availability has increased, and their prices fell in many parts of the country. Nevertheless, the prices of food and fuel remain well above pre-crisis levels. Central Asia after an average to above average start to the October 2015 to April-May 2016 wet season in most of Afghanistan, precipitation was below average in most areas in December. 
As this map shows, cumulative totals for the season through December remain above average in some areas, but are now below average in others. In Tajikistan, this map shows cumulative totals through December, which are below average except in parts of Sugd Oblast. Given that early season precipitation was sufficient for winter wheat planting, the relative dry spell in December is not likely to have significant impact on cropping. It is important to note that, climatologically, precipitation increases starting in January, and the remainder of the wet season will be much more significant in determining availability of water for irrigation and spring planting. Significant populations in Guatemala and Haiti will face crisis, IPC Phase 3, in July 2016, as will smaller populations in El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua. In Haiti, extended drought associated with the ongoing El Nino has resulted in consecutive below-average agricultural seasons, reduced labor demand, and high staple food prices. As this graphic shows, rainfall has been lower than average since 2013. Prices for locally produced maize meal remain above average by 30 to 75 percent on most markets. Before closing, a reminder that the Food Assistance Outlook Brief is available on FuseNet's homepage. Monthly country reports are available here. You may also subscribe to alerts on specific reports, countries, or regions. Once you sign up, we will send an email whenever a new report is posted. And of course, you can learn about new reports by following us on social media. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next month with another Food Assistance Outlook.